Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Rafe Schaefer, a public program manager with Prosper Park Alliance, the nonprofit that sustains Prosper Park, Brooklyn's backyard. We're excited to partner with Flatbush-based cultural organization, Caribbean, to celebrate Caribbean American Heritage Month. This event also marks the launch of Pop-Up Leffert, a new program that brings the educational programs of the Leffert Historic House Museum on the road while the house undergoes a restoration later this year. I would like to thank our sponsor, New York Presbyterian Brooklyn Methodist Hospital for their generous support of this program. Before we begin, I just wanna mention a few rules of the road. For those of us joining us on Zoom, thank you. You'll be muted during the program. Please enjoy the 30 minute video and feel free to submit questions via chat or via comments on our Facebook simulcast. And following the video, I'll be in conversation with our guest artist who will field all of your questions. For those of you watching on Facebook, We'll share the recipes in the comment section following the screening of the video. Now, I'd like to introduce Kenya Cummings with Caribbean, who will introduce our guest today. And I'd like to thank her, Jean-Luc Stanislaus, Shelley Worrell, and Nadine Shelton for their incredible work on today's program. Hi, everyone. My name is Kenya Cummings. I am the Special Projects Coordinator for Caribbean, based right here in Little Caribbean, home of one of the largest and most diverse communities. Caribbean is a small but thriving organization dedicated to collaborating with the Caribbean's most visionary talents and innovative brands. Our cultural platform stands at the crossroads of film, art, culture, and many more. Um, we've recently hit our 10th year, and we are so excited to kick off our second annual pop-up efforts with Prospect Park Alliance in celebration of Caribbean American Heritage Month. Today, we have Brooklyn Rub Spice Company, a Norwegian and Black-owned family business brand that celebrates the flavors and culture of Brooklyn. Their flavor profiles are curated by Isalia LeBron's husband, Chef JD, a New York City fine dining chef of over 20 years. Also, with the current climate, the Caribbean team would like to say we do stand in solidarity with the Black Lives, Mo Black Lives Matter movement. I'm so glad all of you could join us today for the virtual series, and I hope you join us for the rest. Please enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> this is Eliana, Daphne, and Indica, a few of the thousands of people who define how amazing things never stopped happening here at New York Presbyterian Columbia and Weill Cornell Medicine. In our hardest hours, our dedicated teams saw us through. And today, they have their next appointment. Because these same amazing people who kept them safe are here for you now, online and in person. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rafe, an educator here with the Prosper Park Alliance. Today we're at the Leffert Historic House as part of our month-long partnership with Caribbean. I'm excited today to be working with and have the pleasure of introducing Isalia from Brooklyn Rub, who's going to teach us all about Caribbean cooking today. We are going to be working with Isalia as well as her family. Hey. Hey, Rafe. Thank you guys so much for having us. It's wonderful to have you here, especially cooking at the hearth on a beautiful day like this. Oh, it's such a glorious day, and Isali loves to cook outside, so I'm so, so happy to be here. Yeah, um, what are you going to cook today? So today we're making two traditional Caribbean meals. Um, we're making pastelillos, which is very similar to kind of like a beef patty um, or meat turnover. Uh, we're not actually going to be making them with meat. We sometimes in Puerto Rico Rico, where my family is from, we, of course, we stuff them with meat, we stuff them with chicken, and then we also stuff them with cheese. Ooh. So that's what we're going to do today. And my junior interns, that also happens to be their very, very favorite thing to snack on is pastelillos with cheese. Um, and then we're also going to be making another um, kind of like a fast food, street food, um, which is called bacalaito. Mm. Both of these um, items are usually eaten during parties, okay. like kind of when we're in the city and for us uh, Boricuas or Puerto Ricans that live in New York. But if you were on the main island, um, this is what you would find on your way to the beach. And it would be cooked just like this. Um, you know, all of the vendors would just show up um, on your roll to the beach and you stop and you would get a nice huge fried, always fried food, because it's quick food. 
um, huge fried fritter. And um, that's what we're going to make today. We're super excited. Thank you for having us. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much again for being here. When you all are cooking, I'm going to head inside. I'm going to make a big, fresh pitcher of uh, mint iced tea for us to all enjoy uh, to go along with the delicious food you're cooking. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody. I'll catch up with you in a little bit. All right. Thanks, Rafe. All right, friends of Prospect Park Alliance. So we're actually, now that we are with our friends and, well, we've lost a friend and are just here with the family, we're gonna take these masks off so that we can kind of speak to each other. You guys want to take, take a moment to say hello to the- Hello. Hi. So, Prospect Park, um, Again, my name is Isalia LeBron, and I am the owner of Brooklyn Rub. We are an artisanal spice company, and we uh, we create traditional, excuse me, traditional New York City kind of food. So we have Abuelas Adobo and our East New York blend. These are the two uh, all-purpose blends that we're going to be using today. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make my little people's favorite. So I'm going to have my son. Can you please take one of those? And you're going to put it right here. And while you're doing that, oh, you can start, that's right, you can start on peeling it. And Isa, you are my oldest child. So remember, we always keep our knife. You're just going to cut little pieces. Wonderful. Good job. Hold on, we're not, we have to stuff it, remember? So what we're doing is we're taking um, one of these flour discs. Um, you'll find them in the supermarket, um, usually in the international or Goya section. Uh, these are reddish in color because they have anote, which is actually this um, herb here that we're also going to be using in another in another recipe. Oh, I think that's enough. Thank you. Um, so you'll find them in red, or you may find them clear, um, and then these are friable. They're also bakeable ones, you know, if you want to bake them. That's a thing I should say to bake them, but when, if, if I decided to cook this meal, I've decided that I'm not going to do too many healthy things for the day. So these are the orange ones. They're orange because of this. You'll also find them very, very big as well. These are the regular size ones. The big ones are great because you can then cut them in half and then you actually end up getting like two of these little little mini party squares so here's what we're gonna do now I'm gonna have my children they're both gonna grab a piece of cheese they're then gonna close the turnover and then what's the next step using the fork to close it yes but then they're gonna fork it exactly so go ahead guys I'll get rid of this plastic trash before it blows away all right no, 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 we're not going to use all the cheese. I told you they love this stuff. Now you're going to close it. Good job. And fork it. Now I'm going to help my littlest one fork a little bit because he's manhandling. <laughs> I told you to fork it. Just like that. And then you're going to fork one side and then you're gonna fork the other side as well. So once they do that side, they're also gonna do the other side. Oh, that's looking really good. Isa, we may have too much cheese. Yes, yes, so let's take the cheese out. Because I always, I only put one slice when I do it. All right, all right, we gotta make sure that's closed. May I see that really quick? Can I see this? So I'm just going to, you, it's very important that they don't uh, spill. So we want to make sure both ends meet, right? So once they meet, we will fork because you will destroy your oil when everything falls out of it. So I'm going to set this side for him and do this little correction. And then I'm going to let him do it on the other end. Very good job, Isa. Wonderful. Oh, that looks amazing. Here, we'll, we'll put this there for now. And then you want to do another one? All right. Now remember, make sure the ends touch, and then I'll give you your cheese, okay? 
Now, again, when we eat these, it's usually at parties and celebrations. It's a quick food. It's street food. Um, and the next step is going to be to just drop it in hot oil, which I'm about to do right behind me. So I'm going to take these. And you guys stay right here and finish those, okay? Okay. And I'm going to just drop these in the oil. And I'm actually going to use this guy here. And you always have to make sure that your oil is very, very hot. Um, I usually look at my oil by making sure it's rippling. And I see that this oil is rippling. And then, you know, you throw a little splash of water and walk away because you know that's gonna bubble. Um, that's another little secret I do. So I'm just gonna put these here on the tip and they should rise. Because it's cheese, they're going to quick they're going to cook rather quickly. And if it were, you know, a ver oh see, I'm not at home. I was gonna drop it. <laughs> Let's play it safe. And I'm just gonna put these right over the oil. You see that you see one. As a matter of fact, let's, let's take a look at this. It's actually already rising and starting to heat up. So we have one that's almost ready. And I'll take those out in a few minutes, actually. Not even one. So now I'm gonna go check on my other two with my other two. So here we go. Oh, that looks amazing, Joaquin. I love it, I love it. All right, so I'm gonna drop these two in, and the other ones may even be time to come out. And I'll either put these two together. Oh, I see a nice bubble. You can see the color. Oh, you can see as they kind of lighten, you still want that golden brown. I'm almost there. I'm gonna go check on this one. Oh, that one's looking amazing. So I think this guy's done. And I want to get the oil, as much oil off as possible. Hey, Isa. Yes. Would you mind passing me that round brown plate? Thank you so much. Thanks. Oh, oh, oh. I made that happen. All right. All right, I think that's the only one that's... Oh, oh wait, 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 this guy. So now I'm gonna say something very disappointing to my children. They have to wait for this to cool off. <laughs> I know, I knew they were getting ready to just grab at them as soon as I turned around. Um, so, while those are cooling, and in one minute, I will be going back to the, um, back to the pan, um, we're gonna start our bacalaito. I'm going to quickly, because though we've used kind of an oil bath for this, the bacalaito is, um, you can compare it to a codfish or pancake fritter. Um, so it's gonna be flat. So I'm actually gonna take some of our oil and start heating up my pan. And that way we can be sure that, again, we're working with hot oil um, when we're ready. So, now, bacalaito. This here is the actual salted codfish. Um, salted codfish is as old as time. It was commonly used in the Caribbean. Um, it's basically a fish that whether you're traveling um, or you have to take it with you, you can preserve it by just putting it in salt. As you know, the Caribbean is in the, it's an island um, or a bunch of islands. So of course, fish is one of the main uh, food sources there. So this has been soaking. This, when you buy it, it's dry. You'll, you'll find it kind of in, um, in, the, in the 
in the aisles, like it's never refrigerated. It's always gonna be dried and full of salt. It is essential that you soak this. Right now, it's kind of spongy and it's got back its moisture. It's no longer dehydrated. So it's essential that you soak this for the day before you're going to use it. And you change your water a few times. The kind of trick is that you, you, you keep changing the water until you've taken, about, taken away as much salt as you want. Now, when I salted this, any, any Caribbean grandmother will let you know there's nothing more important than your first batch of water. And this water you save. Um, you can bring the flavor back as you prepare it. When you're cooking with it, you can either use plain water or you can use your salt water. And it gives you more flavor to the actual masa um, or batter. Um, masa is, is a common word that we use to describe either any batter that's prepared with flour, um, that's prepared with plantains or any kind of root. We, we call that a masa. So right now we're gonna make a masa for the bacalaito. So I am going to give my people, hello people once again. So I'm gonna ask that while I chop my garlic up quickly, because this is gonna take the longest time. And that's because I use a lot of it. <laughs> Usually um, this would be in a peel, and you'll see me do this. And that's exactly how I would crack it and then put it in my belong over here. Um, so while I do this, I'm gonna have Joaquin. This is one cup of flour. Can you put one cup of flour in that white bowl? Wonderful. Can you put the second cup of flour in that white bowl? Wonderful. Now Isa. You have two cups of white flour. We have some baking powder. Some people use baking powder, some do not. I personally think that baking powder gives it um, a little bit fluffier of a flavor and it allows the zit to rise. Um, Isa, can you please put one, oh no, I'm, I grabbed the one. One tablespoon, and guess what? I have to go get the rest of these in my mouth. Or, or pastelillo, excuse me. into this briefly and we can just see how much and get a look at that you'll find a nice cheesy center my son is somewhere behind me salivating <laughs> yes you may have it now yay so there goes your cheesy center one for you and one for you and yes they can have more in a few so we did this and now we're going to do the garlic. So what I'm going to do is I'm using a pilon to basically mash the garlic. You can also mince this as well. Um, this is just kind of one of the traditional tools that we use. Um, as you see, this arm has been trained to, cut, to do just this since I was a little kid. Usually, you know, when you cook with your parents, um, honestly, as a Puerto Rican kid, like the first things you learn how to do is use the pilong, mash your garlic, and make empanadas. That's always the first thing that your grandparents or your, your abuela, in my case, my father was the cook of my house, always the first job that we did. And this was every day, we had tostones every day. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take my garlic, and again, I use more garlic than most. And you should, maybe for these two cups, use a teaspoon. I don't, I don't believe in that. I, I, I use cloves and sleeves at a time. And now I'm gonna take this and put it in there. And I'm going to cheat a little bit with my bacalao. You're supposed to pull it apart. But for the sake of time, I'm actually just gonna cut it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it this way so I can get different pieces. And then I'm kinda gonna mince and tear. So that I can get the chunks out. 
and then I feel the bone. I'm gonna avoid the bone as much as I can. And I'm gonna now ask that my little folks tear this a little bit. Just tear it with your fingers. Just tear it apart, okay? Just continue to tear that apart. And now to this. Again, we have two cups of flour. We have a teaspoon of the baking powder. I've put in about that much of garlic, a grabbing handful, um, three to four cloves. So now what I'm going to do is put in my cilantro. Now cilantro is another Caribbean um, herb that we eat with all the time. We use it for flavoring as well as a garnish. And I'm going to take this and I'm just kind of folding it because what I'm going to do is I don't mind keeping stems. I, don't, I, I believe in using all parts of the food. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mince it. And I'm making it small for two reasons. A, I want it to be in, incorporated in the masa. So you don't want big leaves. You don't, I'll, I'll put those to the side. And then I also, I'm gonna end up using these as a garnish. For instance, look how beautiful that just got. All of a sudden, it just came up a notch. Would you guys like your other piece? I have fish on my hands. Oh, one moment. Well, you want this piece now? All right. So. We're going to finish chopping this up. I'm giving a little saw action. For those who are unaware, um, our co-owner, my husband, their dad, is a professional chef by trade. So I learned all my, my chef techniques from him. Um, so that's why I chop a little something. So now, what over here have we not put? The, well, the spices, that's right, any of the spices. So now I have some anote. Now, this powder is actually usually in a seed. And what we do is we extract coloring from this and some kind of like a nutty flavor. I believe it'd be similar to the taste of paprika, which is just very, very earthy. And traditionally how, it's, um, how you extract the color is it's a very small seed and you put about three seeds in hot oil and the oil will just automatically turn orange. But we also have it in powder form. And again, this was the same thing that was turning these um, Bastelillo uh, skins red. So I'm, I'm giving it a nice healthy amount of that because I do want that color. And now, Abuela's Adobo. Abuela's Adobo, um, it's comparable to Goya's Adobo, which is a main, you know, spice blend that we use. It's a combination of alliums, which means onions and garlics. Um, so that, we're gonna do one tablespoon. You got this, Isa? So that's not pepper. Again, this is our Brooklyn Rub Abuela's Adobo. And for those who do not know, Abuela's Adobo means grandmother's adobo. Um, my grandmother was my first chef. She's the matriarch of my mom's side of the family. On my father's side, I'm first generation um, in New York. On my mother's side, I'm the second generation. So she's the one who came from PR and she's the cook of the family. She was also the, uh, the cafeteria manager at Mount Sinai in Spanish Harlem. So she was always behind the kitchen. And I gave her an adobo because I love my grandma. Love you, Willa. And then our second is the East New York blend. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm gonna have Joaquin. Oh, I don't know where my little one is. So I'm gonna do half a tablespoon. This is, or less, this is our actual pepper blend. So if you were trying this at home, of course, you have to go get Abuela's Adobo and East New York blend. Um, but you're going to put this pepper in, okay? Or you can substitute the East New York for black pepper. Oh, wonderful. All right, so now we need the fish. I'm gonna make sure we have nice little pieces of fish because you, you don't want too big of a bite. You have to remember that this is salty. So if it's too big, it's gonna just over salt, not the entire fritter, but just your bite. And mouth feels are very, very important when you wanna enjoy that great food. So I'm just giving it a nice little, one of these. There we go. 
Joaquin, you want to help me with this? You sure? Okay. So, now I'm going to put my water in. And I'm going to balance my water. I also have plain water here. So this is again my salt water. And I'm going to start with less. I know I need another cup, but I'm going to start with less. And we're going to just blend that and bring it together. I'm going to bring... Um, I'm going to use this for And that's our second cup. We're going to blend that. All right, Joaquin, can you mind mixing that one for me? Thanks, love. There you go. Oh, that's good. Make sure you get all the way to the bottom. And you, you'll see the red color. It's starting to come now. You can see the seasonings blended in there. It's a nice mix. Here, I'll give you a hand there. Get these sides, get that powder up. And I'm actually going to get my ladle here. And we're gonna start scooping this. I'm gonna try my oil, make sure it's hot enough. And I'm gonna get just a little bit of heat under there. I mentioned before, you really do want this to be a quick dry. I mean, a quick dry. It's that campesino life. Again, I did that just to bring up the heat. And I, I saw that the oil was reactive, but I want it to fry and cook as quickly as possible. Where'd my lady go? Ah, she ran away, she threw legs. And then, we're gonna put this here this here because I'm gonna ask Isa you're gonna hold this so when I'm ready I'm going to flip on to you okay we do is you take some ooh, oil and you kind of just bring it over so you can start the cooking on the other side And you can see the edges are starting to get golden brown. So we're almost ready to turn. I'm just trying to get the oil on the other side so it won't break. When you eat these at home, sometimes they're maybe about this wide at home. Um, but if you go to the island, they, they, they come as big as your face. <laughs> so I wanted to make as big as your face one. Can you pass me a spatula? I'll, I'll take the tongs. I think this is what we got. I'm trying to see if I can flip this. Is Esau, are you sure there's no spatula in there?
wait for it to get a little harder because I don't want to break it. So I'm going to probably end up cooking it mostly on one side. If I, As I've been doing, if I continue to cook the top, I should be fine. And I'll just be patient and wait. I just want to see the other side. <laughs> There we go. That is a beauty. Oh, beautiful. You see that nice golden color? I'm not putting oil on this side of uh, this time because it's already cooked, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm just gonna let it cook for a few minutes, pull it out, garnish it with some of the cilantro once again, and she's gonna be ready. The, I feel it a little hotter on this end. I feel the bubbling. All right, Isa, I am, wait, let me, actually, let me see. I may be calling you too soon. Oh, no, I still need some time. I'm ready for you, my love bug. Come a little closer to me. We made some holes in it. But these are the looks and sounds and smells of PR here. We have. No, we're missing one thing. Who can tell me what we're missing? The cilantro. Can I use all of this? <laughs> I did. I'll just take some here. And another way, if you don't want to walk in, can you stand here, please? You can only stand here. You can just take some cilantro and garnish right on top. In here is the meal. Thank you guys for coming and joining us. Um, it's hot. I know that my friend Raf will be, he has some wonderful mint tea that he's preparing for us and we can't wait to try that. Um, it was wonderful again cooking with you guys. Brooklyn Rub here, um, family who lives on and around and off of Flatbush. Um, a family that shares this beautiful and wonderful park with you guys. So we are so happy to share this moment with you. Right, Joaquin? Right, Isa? Yes, it is amazing. And we're super, super excited. If you guys haven't purchased or haven't heard of it or want to share, if you want to support, remember Brooklyn Rub. Today we use the East New York and Abuelas Adobo. And now we also have our Brownsville blend. We also have um, and uh, a few other blends. And they all represent our beautiful borough of Brooklyn. Oh, there goes our iced tea. Yes. Oh. Yum, yum, yum. It smells great out here. Woo. I bet y'all could use something cold to drink after cooking in front of the hot oh, fire, absolutely. huh? Absolutely. Thank you. Wow, those look amazing. You all did a great job. <laughs> yep, you can put them right Thank there. Thank you. Let's go, guys. We each have a glass of some mint iced tea. Hey, Joaquin. What we have in here is just a little green tea, a little fresh mint from our garden here at the Leopard's Historic House, some honey, and some lemon. Mmm. Oh, this looks amazing. All right, everybody, take a cup, 
junior interns. Good job. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Great job. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Those look amazing. Oh, thank you. Super good. Mm. Welcome back, everybody. We hope you enjoyed the video. For those of you who may have missed the introduction, I'm Ray Schaefer, a public program manager with Prospect Park Alliance, the nonprofit that sustains Prospect Park, Brooklyn's backyard. We've partnered with Flatbush-based Caribbean cultural organization, Caribbean, to celebrate Caribbean American Heritage Month. This event also marks the launch of Pop-Up Leopards, our new program that brings the fun activities from the Leopards Historic House on the road while the museum undergoes a restoration later this year. I'd like to thank our sponsor, New York Presbyterian Brooklyn Methodist Hospital for their generous support of this program. And I'd also like to thank again our friends at Caribbean, Kenya Cummings, Jean-Luc Stanislaus, Shelley Worrell, and Nadine Shelton for their incredible work on this program. Now joining me, I'm excited to introduce Isalia LeBron from Brooklyn Rub. I'll be asking her questions about the recipes she made, as well as her culinary life and inspiration and how it honors her Caribbean heritage, as well as feel, helping field the questions that you all will uh, have to ask in the chat. Hi, Asalia, it's great to see you again. Hello, Rave, great to be seen, how are you? Fantastic, hungry for sure. <laughs> I've gotta say, I've, having tried those, I am craving them right now. The fritters were light and fluffy and that little hit of spice from the East New York blend was like perfect. Oh, thank I you so much. for lunch. Thank you. Isalia, the first thing that really struck me from the experience working with you and watching the video is how much of a joy it was to watch you cook with your kids. Uh, I gotta ask, do either of them wanna be chefs when they grow up, like their mom and dad? Well, um, my, my husband would say he, he, would, he does not want them to go down that field uh, just because it's so many long hours. But, you know, they're inspired by us in the kitchen. And, you know, if you ask them now, you know, they say maybe. Um, one of the things that this moment in time with um, the children being home for remote learning is like a lot of their homeschooling education now from, I guess, what we're doing is they're cooking by themselves. Like, and anytime as your children get older where they gain autonomy, we love it, right, parents? So it's wonderful to see them like making their own breakfasts, big breakfast and lunch. And my husband has vowed that they will make dinner for us before the end of the summer. So they're definitely falling in love with food. And I could really see it, particularly um, in this stage in their lives. I bet you can't wait until that first full meal they cook for you. Oh, my gosh. I don't know what kind <laughs> of quesadilla, a mac and cheese, or, pizza, a, or pasta with pesto they're going to make, but I'm sure it's going to be delicious. <laughs> the pilon, the mortar and pesto, really seemed like a great starting place for kids in the kitchen. As you said, that was something that I think you said your grandmother taught you how to use when you were younger. For those watching at home, do you have any other tips uh, if they want to get their kids involved with cooking at a young age like you have? Are there any other techniques or recipes you might suggest for families to try at home with young kids? Um, you know, for non-traditional foods, a lot of um, kind of like healthy snacking, like I mentioned, like my kids are eating independently. So um, teaching them to also eat healthy. So like fruit smoothies or just putting like as you know, iced teas, Ray, we talked, we talked about how much our family loves iced teas, uh, making their own lemonades. Um, but, but for like kind of really turnkey like technique that's safe, um, uh, plastic knives. <laughs> I always feel like plastic knives in the class. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm also sometimes in the classroom. Plastic knives in the kitchen with, your, with the kids are really great. They're great for um, vegetables. They're great on fruit. Um, you can kind of let them use them and not feel too, too crazy. Um, I also know that, you know, we were talking about like what task we were given as like little Caribbean babies. Um, and the other one outside of like how to use a pilong is how to open a plantain. Hmm. That's a whole skill set. My kids ain't there yet because you need a sharp knife. <laughs> but it's, you know, there's a how do you open a green one versus a yellow one versus the gods of all plantains a black right delicious plantain it takes a skill that that's the, I love that's plantains. their next that's turn. a technique i'm gonna have to learn <laughs> i haven't learned that yet so oh I'm it's all learning. about the thumb it's all about the thumb 
I'm glad you mentioned like a uh, plastic chef knives. We actually use them regularly at the Lefferts Historic House in Prospect Park to get people of all ages helping us prepare food. Mm -hmm. I was also wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what inspired you and your family to start Brooklyn Rub, your spice company, and if each you each of your family members has their own favorite spice blend. Um, the answer is yes. Everyone has their own favorite. Um, first favorite for spice blend for both of my children is Abuela's Adobo. Um, they love chicharrones de pollo, which are just like chicken nuggets without the bread and you and stuff like that but just like savory either sauteed or fried um and then my husband he loves the flatbush hot because he loves heat and that's a really <laughs> complex flavor and my new favorite is the flatbush mild um even like when you open it like it's so aromatic it, the, the bouquets i feel like i have want to have a bottle of wine when i have <laughs> it like that i get excited about that one um and then you know the business itself and kind of how we how we began and this is a really long story so i'll try not to be long-winded but prior like our very first blend the east new york is over a decade old it was used at my husband's uh where he works as a as a chef at butter um in new york city and it was used as one of their staple items for over a decade and we just gave it away to all of our friends and then short story we decided to throw a party and we launched but it being father's day the idea actually came on a father's day because you know, we're in our third year and four years ago, I actually gifted him, I gifted him the domain to Brooklyn Rub. So it was kind of like putting the flag in, in the ground. So that's, cool. that's our inspiration. We have a question coming in from Facebook. We were wondering if the Flappish blend was also inspired by flavors of the Caribbean. Um, absolutely. Uh, the Flappish blend all of our blends um, kind of are synonymous with the neighborhoods that they come from. Um, and we live off of Flatbush. We learn, we play um, on Flatbush um, the entire stretch. So, uh, and, and, and these are our friends and our families that prior to our business that we grew up with. Um, so, you know, the, the jerk chicken is, is a very, you know, uh, um, common flavor um it's it's essentially caribbean barbecue which is bomb <laughs> dot com um mm -hmm. it is the smells of summer it is when you see the the ugly drums on the streets you know what's popping mm -hmm. you know it's hot so it's 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 just all the way brooklyn and um if we had so many requests we get i mean we get requests over what neighborhoods that will be next what neighborhoods and of course flatbush pulls up heavy with the request. Um, so we had to hear it. And, and, and our blends actually take a very long time to, to make. So we were, we were working on the Flatbush blend for like over a year. Um, wow. But it, it ended up being the next one that came out. Awesome. Besides mm -hmm. the amazing spices offered by Brooklyn Rub, can you tell us what some other staples in a Caribbean kitchen or a Caribbean pantry might be if people want to get more involved in cooking Caribbean food at home? Well, I mean, the first thing you need to know is you need every base of flavor, um, different types of flavors. You know, in the Caribbean, if, if to say curry is just a too, too broad of a, of a statement. You know, every island has their different types of curries. Every type of curry is, as we know, um, reflected on the history of that island. So I always say just have all those bases, like the bases that go in the curry, not the curry blend that you're going to buy in the aisle. Um, so those are the things, um, and that's just a, a, a hodgepodge of mix of different types of peppers and dried peppers. Um, and then you need your sauces. You need your green sauce, um, which for me as a, as a Latin Caribbean um, equates to recaito sauce. And that is, you know, the trinity of all flavors of every, almost every dish that we start with. Um, so kind of your green sauces, your basis for your curries, I think, are what you need. Can you tell us what goes into one of the green sauces that you make? Um, yeah, so we use um, pepper, onion, garlic, and um, cilantro. And then uh, this uh, 
kind of uh, very spicy. Uh, it's a it's a Spanish pepper, and right now the name is escaping me, and I can't believe it. Um, but it's it's just that kind of combination, and and it has a very a little bit of a kick, but not a lot, but just enough to like you within like you start cooking, and then within like the first five minutes, you just smell your entire apartment smells like all of it. That sounds delicious. Along with June being Caribbean American Heritage Month. Carib uh, June is also the annual Puerto Rican Day Parade in New York City. I was wondering if you have in the past or if you cook any really special things uh, on a big celebration day like that. Um, I have not in the past. Um, I mean, we, we just, we're not outside. <laughs> I mean, we're not inside the house for the parade. I mean, for the parade. So you know, me, who, who's, um, I'm actually originally born in the Bronx and kind of raised in Spanish Harlem. You're on 116th Street Festival this week, and then you're hitting on Fifth Avenue. But, you know, my family always has, like, these, uh, those stadium seatings that are on Fifth Avenue, because, you know, we're Ricans with a connection. So <laughs> my grandma gets, she's 99, she gets good seats. And she will literally just bring, like, a pot. The, and it'll just feed everybody who's the clo if you're close to proximity to her she's making she's passing you empanadas and pastelillo she's passing you chicken like this is if but you're fed outside you're not eating inside the house Ooh. i gotta come <laughs> to the sure parade with your family yeah. <laughs> you know cod fritters are actually a popular food around the world I i've tried mm -hmm. to make them before at the leopard historic house um, and I was wondering if it's possible to, to make with other fishes if, or even fresh fish. I know not everybody has uh, salted cod available in their grocery store. I mean, you can, you can choose, um, you can use another fish. Uh, you know, the whole, the whole process of like using dehydrated fish is really essential of, of like the, that Caribbean turn king of that uh, recipe. But if you wanted a fresher option, I definitely would use a white fish, you know, go for something flaky. Um, if you, you know, sometimes maybe one with a low fat level, if that may, if, 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 if I'm talking too foodie for you, my apologies, but like something, if, if you know it can be salted, even if you like put it in a salt bath, if you create your own, I mean, if you're trying to avoid the salt, I get that. Um, but natural salt, especially for fish, like any chef will tell you, salt is, is essential for any and all food because it brings out the natural flavor. So you're really working with the natural flavors in the codfish, which is why we even incorporate the salt water. Like that's how much we're into the salt water. <laughs> we like the beach here, big secret. So, you know, it's, it's really about working with a dry working with a dry fish and taking it from dehydrated to hydrated. I've got to say, I think the, using the salt water had to be one of the key ingredients. It really brings forth and then, a lot and then of you the really, you, fish flavor. And, and then think about other things you can do that for. Yeah, totally. Your, your, next, your next fish soup, anything. Save it. We have an, another question coming in from Facebook from Janet. She was wondering if we were talking about padron peppers. P-A-D-D-R-O-N in the Yes, green thank you, Janet. <laughs> I'm glad we got that. So everybody go out thank and get you. some Padron peppers to make your green sauce. I also wanted to ask just briefly about the aprons you and uh, your daughter were wearing in the video. They were so adorable. Uh, is that Brooklyn Rub? Are they uh, available on your website? So our aprons, we, we often use, the outside of our classes, I'm sorry, outside of our spices, we also teach culinary classes. So that's what we use the aprons for. They're kind of part of our swag bag and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we're starting to put like non-food stuff. So right now we have a market bag that's on the order. Um, and then I'm considering putting it on during pre-order, uh, for pre-order the aprons. But we only source, like I completely everything we do from our bottles to our labels to the lids to the aprons to our printer is all hyper local so getting the stuff takes a while um and my printer guy you know sometimes <laughs> i gotta be patient question coming in from oh yeah um, even like your um your daughter was wearing the caribbean um, oh oh wait apron. Let's, discuss. 
that you can get now. The Shop Caribbean, <laughs> yeah. you can mm -hmm. get that. I love that. I, my parents have that. I, I've, I've bought it for all my, that's my Christmas for all the elders in my family. And I have one, but I don't even touch it. <laughs> <laughs> you like, yeah, like I want to preserve it is, this. It is literally me. It's it's literally art. It's the mural, mm -hmm. a muralist worked on it. So yeah. there's that. That one's super fancy. You <laughs> you guys can shop that tonight. <laughs> yes. Okay. Lucy on Facebook wants to know, Asalia, what would be your ideal Prospect Park picnic food? Oh, well, that's a quick answer. I'm a Prospect Park mom. I could just talk about my last picnic. <laughs> um. I personally like to, when I eat outside, I like to bring seafood. So I'm like a packed a lobster and make a lobster roll outside kind of gal. Um, like to a chicken, jerk chicken out the bucket. I just came from the beach today, so it wasn't Prospect Park. But we, came, we had jerk chicken and we had some kebabs. And um, it's Prospect Park, so not Prosecco, but... <laughs> <laughs> grilling some jerk chicken on a barbecue in Prospect Park on a beautiful day sounds amazing. Absolutely. And it brings the smell brings other boys to the yard. <laughs> Maria on Facebook wants to know, do you have any other recipes uh, that use salted cod or your rubs and, and the rub? Um, for the salted cod, not really. Like literally I ended up, I ended up making soup later on with it but can i can you ask the question regarding the, the the spices again i'm I'm not understanding that i guess there's just uh any other salted cod recipes that also use your rubs oh um not that i could not not that i can think of i mean you have other islands again that use um salted cod and they have different names i know oprah's one of them so there's just you, you can just apply it and then, you know, some people make them and I made them into pancake style fritters. They have balls like there's different ways. And again, you tweak it to figure out which which island savory moment you want to indulge in. And um, I'm pretty sure you can apply to all. That's great. We have another couple questions coming in on Zoom, if you could just give me a moment. No problem. These are wonderful questions, everybody. <laughs> well, I'm oh, yeah, getting the questions that are coming in on Zoom. Can you just tell us a little bit about how other people can learn more about Brooklyn Rub? Sure. Um, so we can be found on all of the social media platforms, on the Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you won't find us dancing, but I'll get creative with some food content. Um, and then Facebook. Um, and then, of course, our website, www.brooklynrub, and it's spelled the old Dutch way. So it's B R E U K E L E N. Again, that's B R E U K E L E N, rub, R U B, um, dot com. And yeah, we're easy to connect to if you you know, want to email us, you'll find it's either you're going to contact myself or my husband. Um, and then outside of the, again, the, the spices, we do the classes, we work with restaurants, um, we supply restaurants, we do uh, menu development, um, some personal chefing sometimes. Um, so yeah, we, we're just your food family out here in Brooklyn. Awesome. Uh, Asalia, Jana on Zoom wanted to say thank you for sharing your heritage and your recipe and was wondering if you were going to do any other virtual cooking sessions in the future and she'd specifically learn to love how to make pastelitos. Oh, absolutely. We'll definitely, we have done them in the past. Um, we did one maybe two weeks ago. Uh, we'll do one again. There is an amazing white bean flatbush burger recipe that we have floating around that I have to redo because it will change everybody's lives. A white bean flatbush burger. Trust me, that was one of our last lessons and I'm gonna redo it because it's delicious. That sounds delicious. It all see, sounds scrumptious. Yeah. It does sound scrumptious. Thank you, Jada. I just noticed I can actually see some of the Zoom comments. 
Yeah, just like watching the video, I'm like, I'm hungry now. I'm like, oh, listen, I have a piece. I'm supposed to like, as soon as we're done, I'm officially getting on the grill for Father's Day. But um, I got some leftover bacalaito. I'm going to hit that up. And I'm the only one in the house who eats it. But oh, well. <laughs> Well, let me okay, see if the so audience has any other questions. I just want to thank you both. Kenya from Caribbean, thank you for everything. Asalia, it was such a pleasure cooking with you today. Uh, the other day. Other day. With you again <laughs> today. Hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Yes, absolutely. Uh, to everybody watching, I just want to let you know that this is the first in a month-long series of videos. Uh, we'll be having another uh, Caribbean uh, guest artist speaking with us this time next week. Uh, so tune in and again in the future. Thanks from everybody at the Prospect Park Alliance, Caribbean and Brooklyn Rub for joining us today. And we'll hope you'll join us again next week. Please do, please join us and have fun and continue with our virtual series. It's every Sunday at 2 p.m. Um, you can sign on an RSVP on Eventbrite. So just enjoy, enjoy your Sunday with us. It'll be great. Yes, it's a, it was a wonderful. And thank you guys for having me both. Uh, I am Caribbean and Prospect Park, just as patrons of the borough and the park. It is such a, such a, an honor to be involved in this. I appreciate it, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs>